YouTube fam. Sorry about the uh, post-workout hair, post-workout face, but I'm just in the middle of editing my video for the Sunny Webster workshop that we went to last weekend. Um, and I thought I'd give some like background info as I go through. So last weekend we went to um, the workshop or seminar that Sunny Webster, Great British uh, ex-Olympian weight, Olympic, Olympic, Olympic weightlifter, basically he's been to the Olympics and he's an Olympic weightlifter. He hosted a seminar in Brisbane, so we drove up there. Um, if you have been following me on Instagram, same shameless plug, you would know that like I am obsessed with Sonny Webster and I just think he's an awesome, cool dude and I think that he runs a really cool thing. So anyway, I thought we could learn heaps if we went along to it. It's been a bit of a like goal of mine or a bucket list thing for me to go to his seminar. Um, it is a little bit pricey for sure, um, but we just said, screw this, let's do it. And honestly, no regrets. I had like an absolute blast and I learned heaps of stuff that I can take away with me to training. So um, the videos are gonna show a little bit of what you kind of do in the seminar. If you're thinking of going to one of these workshops, um, we have a little interview with him during, and then um, we finish off with a little bit of a lift off in the video, which is so epic to see live. Enjoy the video, don't forget to um, subscribe and hit like. Um, it really helps support the channel and what I do. Um, and yeah, let's just get started. Yeah. Go, Shawnee. I want to see your overhead squat, mate. Especially when I've given you some new information to think about, you're, you're not going to have ingrained everything I taught you today. It's going to take you now, going away from here, six weeks, six months, to be like, right, I know, and you will all have two things by the end of the day that you need to 
to go away and work on. And that's what you need to go and put into practice so that under pressure or under an unknown territory of a new way, that technique sticks with you. Because we just end up resorting back to what we know best because that's what you're confident with. You wouldn't go in with the, you know, the different style, you go in with what, you're, what you feel is the most confident on that day. But hopefully over a period of time, you'll, you'll resort back to the good technique. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is when you're attempting those sub-maximal ways, sometimes you just have to fucking put an effort and give it everything rather than overthinking it too much. Because, like I said, you're not going to necessarily impale that perfect technique on that unknown way if you haven't practiced it a lot in the past. Does anyone else have any questions or anything they want to talk about? Yeah. Pretty much like isolated training, like lats or shoulders or... Like accessory stuff. stuff. Accessory training. Yeah. yeah, I think it's definitely got a place. But it's all down to how often you train. So if we're talking for, I, let's talk in your, your situation as a crossfitter. If you've got five days of training and you're a crossfitter, you need to break up like, right, first things first, working, here's the training, daily training. Before that, what are your goals? What competitions are you gonna do? So then you have, each part of the year, right, I want to be in my best shape. I'd say no more than four times a year. Okay, so you pick your four competitions that you're going to go into next year. And then you go, right, I've got 12 weeks, okay, building up to this competition. 12 weeks here. What do I need to do in these 12 weeks in order to be my best in that competition? I know I suck at strength. So then the first block of this six weeks, your focus is on strength. So therefore, in those five sessions, that's the first thing that goes into your training. Okay, so you put in your weightlifting. Each day you're gonna do one exercise or two exercises as a key focus in your training session. Then, if you've got time to maintain your CrossFit alongside that, then you put in your cardio piece. Okay, and then that's the first six weeks. Focus on weightlifting and cardio. The next six weeks of that, then you stick in the next focus. So you need to make a significant gain in that first area of your weakness first before you move on to the next thing that you're not so good at. And you have to do that in CrossFit because there's so many like elements that you need to be good at. So it's only then would I start sticking in assistance. So at the moment, like I said, I'm, I'm training five days a week as well, but I only do one exercise a day. And because I'm only doing that amount, there's not really any need to stick in too much assistance because I'm only in those five sessions just covering the core exercises, the snatch, clean and jerk, pulls and squats. Okay, and then maybe I have my one day that's an assistance day. Yeah, so I think it's got a place, but it just depends on how much, how much you're training, yeah. You know, I wouldn't bother doing like, you know, isolated assistance exercise if you haven't got squats in your pro training program three times a week. I always say to the CrossFit athletes that I work with, look at how much barbell is involved in the CrossFit Open. That was like 60% of the workouts that was in the Open had a barbell, got barbell in. Does 60% of your training involve a barbell? Probably not. You know, they do a lot more um, engine and all this other cardio. And yeah, for most of the top CrossFit guys that I work with, majority of their training is barbell because it's such a huge part of what you guys have to be good in in CrossFit. It's the exact same way as we program for weightlifting. First six weeks, it's a strength block. That's the first thing in my training, I'm squatting and pulling first. I'm not bothered if my snatch and clean and jerk in this first phase is shit. Then once my squat number's gone up, my deadlift number's gone up, my good mornings, whatever it is, the strength exercise that I'm working on, I need to take that strength and get that to transfer then into the snatch and the clean and jerk. So then the squats and the pulls goes to the end of the program and then we use an exercise to transfer strength into the actual classical lifts. And then finally, I now need to hit a new PB with this new strength and technique that I've got, tapering down the intensity on the squats and the pulls and then just focusing on technique and the snatch. So much shorter sessions, lots of single reps, just working on technique, then hit a PB and then you go back down. Strength for me has always been my area of weakness. So yeah, it's, it's, I've always struggled with that, which is really weird. You think, I know there's no way, Sonny, because you're strong. 
But as a weightlifter, my numbers in strength are way down. Like my best deadlift is 240 kilos. I can clean jerk 200, so that's like unheard of. Yeah. You know, and my best snatch is 160, but then my best clean jerk, I've said 200, I've jerked 212 kilos overhead, but my strength numbers are nowhere near. So my dead life then is way down. Squatting numbers 262, back squat. For someone who snatches as much as me, it should be nearer to like 300. You know, and all the guys that I compete with, they are doing those strength numbers. So I, I find the best combo for me when it comes to squatting and strength training was doing three times a week, two back, one front as my split, and then harder sessions. So the way that I program squats is I'll do six working sets above 80, 70% intensity. So anything up to that point is warm up, and then they have to complete six working sets above 70%. And then that's working between a rep range of one and six. So the hardest session of that, if you like, would be 6-6 six, six at maybe like 70% or 6-6 six, six at 80% and then right up to doing like six singles at maybe like progressively 92, 90%, 92%, 94, 96 and so on. But collating six sets. So they can be anywhere within that bracket. That's generally how I will structure my squat. And then just progressively overload. You know, two hard weeks, one easy, two hard weeks, one easy. So, try and increase the weights that I'm squatting at over the first two weeks, drop back down, and then go back to the last weight of the other one, and back up. Yeah, so it's always giving your body that chance to have a little bit of rest, consolidate, consolidate the improvements you made, and then progress again. Um, I had a question about, like, from like a mental point of view, what, how do you handle, like, failure in competition or like in like when you fail a lift in like a high pressure situation like what goes on in your head or like how do you sort of get yourself out of that like not bit like affecting you if you have to say like lift again or really good question and I think for me first of all it goes back to pre-competition or pre-performance so if this is my competition and I have, say, I used to say two weeks. Have I done everything in those two weeks to be in my best possible shape to perform on that day, okay? And if I can stand on a platform or in, a, in an environment where I need to perform and say I did everything I possibly could have, that's not just training, that's sleep, nutrition, all of the areas that could affect my performance, if you can genuinely say that and you still fail, then that's fine because you couldn't have done anything more to improve, to be in better shape than you could have on that day. Shit happens, sometimes you do fail, sometimes you do have bad days where you can't lift and there's no explanation, yeah? Because you, you've done everything. But if you know, oh, I went out on the beers last night and I lifted shit, there's a reason, yeah? So it's much easier to, come to terms with that failure if you know the reason why, you know? So that's, that's the main thing for me, making sure that whenever you're building up to a competition or somewhere where you want to succeed or perform, make sure you do everything you possibly can in your build up time for that performance so that you can stand there stress free and go, I couldn't have done anything more to be in this shape today. Okay, and then if it fails, happy, yeah? Or go and change something. Yeah, I've had people come to seminars before and um, they'll bring all their food, prep food, they'll sleep for 12 hours before you know the seminar. I'm like, do you do that normally? I'm like, no. So why did you do it for me today? I don't know, I thought it was the right thing to do. And I was like, if you want to eat donuts and smoke five, five cigarettes before you come in and train, because that's what you normally do, don't change something for me. That's something that you need to go away and changing your lifestyle so it's not something that you just do the day you want to compete or the day you want to perform because it doesn't work like that. Yeah, you need to make changes so far out from that point you want to succeed. Yeah? Totally. So that, that's the easiest way for me to overcome failure is to make sure that I've done everything I can in my prep. If I haven't, then I know what I need to do but better and the next time in order to make sure I don't, don't fail the next time. But also, I think in a more like 
immediate mm. environment for everyone dealing with Miss Lifts because mm. we'll all do that and you'll probably see me fucking miss a few in a minute yeah and I think that's something that a lot of people don't see that good lifters do miss lifts yeah we just don't post them so much but I miss plenty of fucking lifts okay but the thing that I do differently to what you guys will do instead of going back down to that bar going fuck and go wanting to go again I'll always film my videos of my training I'll miss a lift I'll go and watch it and I'll go oh that doesn't look right or that's not good and then I've actively got something going into the next lift to correct it so it goes back to that process I've got the next thing to think about okay so that I'm actively going to change something that's going to make that lift different from the one that I just missed okay and that's productive that's what training is for Okay, so that's really important whenever you are missing this, the next time you go for it, you have something different to approach it with, it's going to make you get it. Okay. And then if you're having a really shit day and a bad session and all, everything goes tips up, which happens probably more than 50% of the time, what I like to do is just do exercises that are fun and that don't take a lot of thinking. So that day when I feel like shit or, you know, snatch is gone to fucking crap, I'll just resort back to an exercise like snatch balls or good mornings or back squat or something that's not super technical, something that I can just do and enjoy easy and move on. And then you always will leave your session knowing that I, regardless of your snatch from shit today, I still did something that's going to eventually add to me improving. Yeah? And the worst injury I ever had was one morning I woke up and I was like, fuck, I can't walk and get out of bed. I had three dehydrated discs, two disc bulges, one fused vertebrae and bone growth over my disc bulge and I was like about 15 years old. And I went to the doctors, had my back scanned, they were like, fuck, they'd never seen anything like that in someone my age before. And the doctor was like, you're going to be in a wheelchair if you carry on weightlifting. And I was like, no, I, I need to do weightlifting, this is my thing, I want to get to the Olympics. And he was like, well, I wouldn't advise you carrying on lifting. So I spent nearly six weeks on crutches trying to recover. Um, just to get back walking again and my my vertebrae was touching on my side nerve which was causing the pain um, and I was like fuck what am I going to do and uh, well, my coach at the time was like well you can go and see a physio and maybe we can try and rehab it and we'll just see you know um, how you can come back for this and I spent a whole year all I was doing was doing technical work with a 15 kilo bar whole year. At that time it was fucking mind numbing because I was snatching 100 kilos but all I was allowed to do for a year was snatch 15 kilos. No habit, 15 kilos for a year. But that time gave me all the time in the world just to focus on making my technique so good, my mobility super good, cleaning up silly things that I used to do like my knees used to cave in like fuck when I used to live. If you go back on YouTube and watch some old videos of me. I'm coming out of cleans so like this. <laughs> but because I was only doing, working like 15 kilos at the time, I was watching myself in the mirror, snatching, watching my knees stay out in the catch, watching my clean stay still in the catch. And then just having that so much time just to focus on those little tiny bits while I was injured was like, like I said, the best thing um, that could have happened to me. You know, weightlifting is a very dated sport in nature. It's not extremely fun to watch. It's not sexy, unfortunately. But, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to change because I obviously love weightlifting. It's been, I started it when I was 11 years old. I've been doing it over half my life. And go being, doing things outside the norm ruffles people's feathers, you know? Doing stuff that's different, people don't like. And that is challenging. But if someone doesn't do it, if someone doesn't say something that's, you know, out of the norm, then nothing will ever change, you know? And you've got, I, I got fucking, once I walked into a gym wearing a red snapback um, and the whole gym went fucking dead silent. And the coach came over to me and he goes, uh, what do you want? And I was like, uh, oh, I just wanted to drop in and train if that's all right. Because me and you need to have a chat first. And he comes over and goes, you fucking wore, wore a snapback in the Olympic Games. You disrespected our sport. You ruined it. And I was like, what do you mean? You just fucking dressed me down at the, in the fucking, just as I walk into this gym that I've never been trained on. 
because I did something, you know, different. And for me, wearing the snapback wasn't a sign of disrespect. It was my way of trying to express my personality through my performance. And that's one of the biggest things, like I said, with, with weightlifting, you see, you see this big ogre come out, lift a weight that none of you guys can comprehend. And again, I'm gonna lift weights and do stuff to a barbell that is just gonna make you go Yeah, because you don't know how heavy it feels. Okay, so you can't really connect at all with that, per with, with that person because you, know, you have no comprehension of how heavy that weight is. But like, in those six seconds, for me to be able to put on a show or a performance and try and express my personality through what I was wearing, I think it's really important because I think as an athlete in weightlifting, you put in so much hard slug hours in training that no one sees, and then you're there, you have six seconds on the platform, boom. And it's really hard to get that across, you know, whether you don't see what's going on in the warm-up room, you don't see what's happening in their training, you just see that moment. And that's one of the hardest things that I think, you know, the things I'd never liked about weightlifting and all I always wanted to change was to try and express personality through what I do. And I think now with the impact that I've started to make with um, what I do on my Instagram, do the circus crazy shit, just to give people a different view of weightlifting and to see that, it, you know, it can be a little bit exciting, it can be different. I think CrossFit's been amazing for the sport of weightlifting. More women are doing it, more <coughs> great, good looking women are doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And people are looking at weightlifting going, oh, I'm gonna be bulky if I'm gonna do that. It's actually yeah. like, fuck yeah, it feels good to be strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's appealing to more and more people, which is great. And I don't know if some of that's come through, you know, my impact to change as well, and I hope it has. But like the, the whole thing with, wanting to build this gym in Soweto, which was really hard to get my head around because I've never done anything like this before, was that, fuck, I'm just gonna start it and see what I can do. We've raised nearly, well, $10,000 now, um, so far for this gym. We're gonna build the floor and I'm going there in May, and hopefully the gym, we've got another 30,000, and then we're gonna build this gym in a container out there for these kids to train in. And, that for me is my opportunity to help someone else get their dream achieved. But, but yeah, it's not been not been easy, but it's definitely a new challenge and something that. I always, I always just get the first pick the first part of the complex and then let the next rest go. It's good, funny. Ah. Minimum two things you need to just do your boots. Quite all. 
and it was too late to go home to try and get to pick it up because I would have missed the way. So I ended up having to borrow my mate's old lifting shoe and lend some shoes at the fucking competition. The best, the fucking biggest competition of my life. But this is what I was saying, like when, if you do everything you possibly can in your build up, the training, the sleep, those finer details don't matter. Like it did not matter for me on that day. Like I said, I could have worn a pink tutu and I would have lifted it the same way. So I've done everything I needed to to be in shape for that day.
guys. Yes.